Ever had a close encounter with wildlife? It's fascinating and thrilling, isn't it? But do you know how to interact with them? Or better yet, how to respond to their behaviors? Today, we dive into an assortment of wild animal behaviors. From the massive grizzly bear's bluff charge to the delicate dance of bioluminescent jellyfish. You might think you know some of these creatures, but when you're out in the wilderness and come face to face with them, do you really know what to do? Now, when you see a black bear climb a tree or a gorilla beat its chest, do you know what's really going on? And what about the crows mobbing together or a moose licking your car? But the most intriguing behavior of all, well, you'll have to wait to discover that one. Stay tuned, folks. The wilderness is calling. What's up, all you incredible and curious folks out there? Ready to unravel another set of mysteries today? I'm Caesar, and with me, as always, is our dazzling commentator, Sonia. Hello, everyone. Excited to be here. And we're set to dive into another episode of Curiosity Wonderland. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on the bell icon to get notified about our daily episodes. Are you all ready? Let's get started. Let's dive into the animal kingdom, shall we? If you're a nature lover and find yourself exploring hiking trails or national parks, it's crucial to understand the behaviors of the wild creatures you might encounter. Let's start with the mighty brown bear, also known as the grizzly bear. Whoa, the grizzly bear. I've heard they can be pretty intimidating. Absolutely. They are incredibly powerful and can be terrifying when they perform what's known as a bluff charge. Bluff charge. That sounds like a poker term. <laughs> Quite fitting, really. It's when a bear runs towards you but stops short of attacking. It's their way of scaring you, and it's accompanied by huffing and jaw-popping sounds. Yikes. So what's the best way to handle that? The key is to back away slowly, and whatever you do, don't turn your back and run. That could provoke the bear to chase you. That's good to know. Sounds like understanding an animal's behavior can really make a difference in a sticky situation. Now let's talk about another bear species, the black bear. Unlike brown bears, which are rather large and intimidating, black bears are generally smaller and more skittish. So they're not as scary as brown bears? Well, all wild animals can potentially be dangerous when they feel threatened. But yes, black bears are more likely to climb trees when spooked, seeking safety, or trying to protect their food source. So what should we do if we encounter a black bear? The best thing to do is to let the black bear climb the tree. This will help calm it down and give you a chance to slowly and carefully back away to safety. And if a black bear decides to attack? Unlike a brown bear, where your best bet is to play dead, if a black bear attacks, you should try to escape to a secure place first. If that's not possible, you should fight back by using anything you can find, concentrating your strikes on the bear's muzzle. That's good to know. So the way we react can depend on the type of bear we encounter. Exactly. Knowing the difference between a black bear and a grizzly bear can actually be life-saving. Leaving the bears behind, let's take a hypothetical trip to Africa, a continent teeming with fascinating wildlife. Let's start with giraffes. They may appear goofy and graceful, but don't be fooled. They can be very aggressive, especially when they're asserting dominance or competing for mates. Aggressive giraffes, really? Could you give an example of their aggressive behavior? Absolutely. Male giraffes engage in something called neck swinging. They whip and swing their necks into their opponent with great force. If you ever see this, the best thing to do is keep your distance. Wow, that's something I wouldn't want to see up close. What about elephants? Elephants are another example of creatures that can behave quite aggressively to assert their dominance. An elephant might charge towards a perceived threat, but stop short of attacking, hoping to intimidate it into backing down. If you ever find yourself in this situation, the best course of action is to walk away slowly without making any sudden movements. And how about gorillas? Are they as intimidating as they appear in movies? Well, male gorillas do assert dominance within their communities by beating their chests loudly and making aggressive, deep noises. These displays of power are meant to impress their mates and neighbors. But remember, these animals are asserting dominance within their own community, 
not necessarily threatening humans. As always, respect their space and observe from a distance. Now moving from large mammals to tiny insects, let's talk about fire ants. Despite their small size, they should not be underestimated. These ants are known for their remarkable coordination and also for their aggressive behavior. I've heard about their stinging bites. That's correct. They can attack en masse, which can be quite painful. So it's generally a good idea to keep your distance from fire ants. Even under the best of circumstances, there really isn't much to be gained by hanging out with these industrious little creatures. Is there anything specific we should watch out for? Yes, there's a particular behavior called the ant raft, or the raft formation. This is when hundreds or even thousands of fire ants link their legs together and form a floating mass. They do this typically when they are in or near water, using their raft to escape floods and rising waters. That sounds like quite a sight to see. Indeed, but remember, while they are building and existing within their raft, fire ants are at some of their most aggressive points in life, so it's best to observe from a safe distance. Now let's move on to the moose. They are extraordinary creatures, very powerful, very large, and very unpredictable. They can do some incredible and devastating damage in just seconds if they choose to turn on you. That sounds really intimidating. And you mentioned they are unpredictable. Do they exhibit any unusual behaviors? They certainly do. One strange behavior that is common to moose all over North America is the act of licking things. They've even been known to lick cars, attracted by the salt that often accompanies anti-snow measures on roadways. Oh, that reminds me of a story from my childhood. When I was a little girl, I remember visiting my grandparents up north, and one morning we woke up to find a moose licking our car in the driveway. I found it amusing at the time, but I see now it could have been a dangerous situation. That's a great story. It demonstrates how wildlife and humans often intersect in unexpected ways. The act of a moose licking a car may seem harmless, but it can actually lead to serious consequences. I definitely have a new perspective on that childhood memory now. It's so important to understand and respect the wildlife around us. Speaking of unusual animal behaviors, let's talk about crows. These birds are known for their intelligence, and one behavior that showcases this is something called mobbing. Mobbing, that sounds intense. What does it entail? Well, mobbing typically occurs when a group of crows feels threatened. The threat could be a bird of prey, like a hawk, an eagle, or even a peregrine falcon. Sometimes, the mere presence of a potential predator can set off a mob. It can also be a human, particularly if they are too close to a crow's territory, most often where they are raising their young. So what happens during this mobbing? It's quite a spectacle. Scores of crows fly in, cawing and causing a ruckus in the sky, their black bodies and powerful wings flutter around as wildly as possible. The combined effect of dozens of crows doing this all at once can be extremely intimidating. Sounds like a scene straight out of an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Exactly. So if you ever find yourself in the midst of a crow mob, the best course of action is to leave the area as quickly as possible. Moving on, let's discuss the praying mantis. It's an incredibly interesting creature. It's long, thin, green, and can often be mistaken for a leaf or part of a tree. So they blend in with their environment. Yes, exactly. They use this camouflage to hunt their prey. When it's time to hunt, they fold their forelimbs in front of them, appearing to bow down as though deep in prayer. That's where they get their name, right? That's correct. But don't worry, humans aren't mantis food. If you see one in this position, there's no need to worry about an attack. So what should we do if we come across one? The best course of action is to admire it from afar. Interestingly, mantises are considered to be good luck charms in many cultures. They symbolize health, wisdom, and wealth. So if you spot one and leave it undisturbed, legend has it that you may receive good luck and fortune. That's fascinating. It's incredible how different creatures have varying significance in different cultures. Indeed, it is. It's always interesting to learn about these unique aspects of the animal kingdom. Now let's dive into the world of vultures. These birds have an impressive wingspan, and when they spread out their wings, it's quite a sight. So they're doing this for show? Not exactly. 
This behavior, often mistaken for an aggressive display, is actually them sunbathing. There are several reasons for this. If it's been wet, they do this to dry their wings so they can fly again. They also use sunbathing to regulate their body temperature. Is there any other reason? Yes, there is. Vultures also sunbathe to rid themselves of parasites. Small parasites can grow in their feathers and skin folds, and sunlight can help to get rid of these unwanted guests. So that, that's actually very clever. It certainly is. It's another example of how animals have adapted to their environment. Now let's move on to jellyfish. These fascinating creatures are bioluminescent, meaning their bodies naturally emit light in the water. That must be an incredible sight. But why do they do that? Jellyfish use bioluminescence for two primary reasons, as a defense mechanism to scare off predators and as a lure to attract unsuspecting prey. So it's all about survival. Exactly. As beautiful as the sight might be, it's always a reminder that in nature, everything serves a purpose. Let's delve a bit deeper into the jellyfish's bioluminescence. It's not just a simple flash of light. Some species can produce chains of lights, releasing thousands of glowing particles mimicking the spread of small plankton. So it's a decoy? Yes, this is done in the hope of confusing predators. However, it's important to remember that when a jellyfish displays its bioluminescence, it's often agitated and fearing for its safety. It's a survival mechanism, not a light show for spectators. So the message is, enjoy the view, but keep your distance. Exactly. Now let's switch topics to wolves. Their howls in the wilderness can seem creepy, but there's more to it. Wolves howl to communicate with each other. Like a phone call in the animal kingdom? You could say that. Some howls are warnings to other wolves to stay out of their territory, but most often they're calling out to their pack members, checking in on them. Given that wolves can be solitary and cover large territories, they need an efficient way to communicate over distance. So it's not a predator's call to dinner as we might imagine? No, not at all. The next time you hear a wolf howl, remember they're just touching base with their pack, not issuing a warning or a threat. To sum up our discussion about wolves, they're remarkable and often misunderstood creatures. The lone wolf howling in the wilderness isn't out to get you. It's simply a social creature keeping in touch with its pack, asking, where are you? Or what are you up to? So it's safe to say that they're neighborhood gossipers? Hey, hey, that's one way to put it. So next time you hear a wolf howl, remember it's just their version of a phone call or a group chat message checking in with their friends. And when you understand that, you can truly appreciate the beautiful symphony they create. Isn't that a vibe we can all get behind? Today, we've demystified some behaviors of our wild friends, from the bluff charge of a grizzly bear to the bioluminescence of a jellyfish, and even the howl of a lone wolf. We've realized that there's a lot more behind these behaviors than meets the eye. The wild world is truly filled with fascinating wonders, and it's only as wild as we don't understand. Absolutely. And remember, knowledge is power, especially when it helps us coexist with these magnificent beasts. So next time you're out in the wilderness, don't forget these handy tips we've shared with you today. You might just save yourself some panic and earn a newfound appreciation for our fellow creatures. And on that note, it's time to wrap up today's episode. Yes, we hope you found it as enlightening as we did. Don't forget to blast that like button, leave us a comment, and share this episode with everyone you know. Every bit of support helps us to keep bringing these exciting stories to you. Thank you for joining us on this wild journey. Until next time, stay curious, stay safe, and keep exploring. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. We gleaned these fascinating insights from the article, 10 Important Wild Animal Behaviors to Memorize by Selme Angulo, published on Listverse on March 26, 2024. If you want to explore more, we've included the full URL in the description. Now I'm off.